Hey YouTube, this is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here for LinuxMusicStudio.com, and I have a special video here today, and what is sitting here beside me is an old Apple iBook G4 with the 1.42 gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, and a hundred gigabyte hard drive. And what I did is I installed Ubuntu 16.04 LTS on this system, and I got it to run pretty great. So. What I want to do is show you how I was able to do this and uh, go through all of the uh, stumbling stones that you might run into if you try to do this yourself. Now what can you do on one of these old laptops? You can still record and produce music just fine. Jack runs good, uh, Rose Garden runs good, LMMS runs good, Pure Data runs good, Milky Tracker, our door, all types of things will run just fine on these laptops. So if you want a cool old vintage laptop to record on and do it with Linux. Uh, these old iBooks are a good selection. Uh, don't expect to be doing a whole lot of uh, fancy web browsing with it like YouTube and Facebook and things like that because it really just can't handle it. But other than that, it's really, really fun to use and it's fun to get Linux set up and running on one of these. And uh, I'm going to show you how I did it. And if you like videos like this, be sure to check out my Patreon page, which is just patreon.com slash Linux Music Studio. And if you contribute there, you'll have access to my Discord server where you can chat with me directly or other people who are on the server uh, producing music in Linux as well. And if you want to contribute in some other way, if you don't use Patreon, you can always go to my Bandcamp page and download some of my music there, and that's just uh, anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so what you're going to need to do first is actually burn a DVD of Elubuntu uh, for PowerPC, which you can just download at the Elubuntu website. You cannot boot from USB on one of these because it just won't work. There's no way to do it. Um, once you have the DVD burnt, then you just insert it in the computer and restart and then after you hear the Apple chime sound, you're just going to hold down the letter C key on the keyboard. Once the computer restarts, you're going to get to a black screen and some text. Just press enter on that screen. And then it's going to change to a white screen with some text. And this next screen that it gets to is called Yaboot. Y -A B -O -O -T. And this is going to be important later on, so remember that. The loading time is going to be a bit slow, so don't worry about it. It's going to take a while for it to boot up for the first time with the disk. Eventually you're going to get to a screen where you're going to see a mouse pointer. And then eventually after that, it's going to start loading up Ubuntu. And then finally you'll come to a desktop. On the desktop, you'll see an icon that says install El Ubuntu. So just go ahead and run that. This part is pretty straightforward. You're just going to select your language, time zone, uh, keyboard, all of that stuff that you normally do on any type of installation. You shouldn't have any problems here. I didn't have any. And just walk through the steps. In my tutorial, I'm not doing a dual boot. I'm only going to have El Ubuntu on here. We are erasing Mac OS. So just select the entire disk. Then you'll enter your username and password. And finally, it'll start copying all the necessary files to the disk. After about 20 minutes or so, finally, you'll get to a screen that'll say the installation has completed. And then you're just going to restart the computer. Make sure that the installation media ejects before it starts up again. After it restarts, you'll see the first boot screen. Press enter and then when it reaches the second boot screen before it turns white, start typing. This way it'll stop it from booting. Remember earlier when I was talking about Yaboot? This is what this is and you're going to need to type a command in here in order to keep it from freezing once it boots up into Linux. On this particular model, the graphics drivers are extremely fussy. So entering in these settings will keep it from crashing while you're trying to use the system. What you see written on the screen here is exactly what you're going to need to type in. And that is just Linux space video equals Radeon FB colon off space Radeon dot mode set equals one space 
radeon.agp mode equals minus one. Make sure it's a minus one and not a one. Once you have that entered in, just go ahead and press enter. Once the system finally boots up, go ahead and log in and let the default desktop load. While that's loading up, now is a great time to go find an ethernet cable and plug it into your router and then plug it into the iBook. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to get your Wi-Fi working, is just open up a terminal and type in the following commands. It's just going to be sudo apt-get update, ampersand, ampersand, sudo apt-get install firmware-b43-installer. Uh, press enter and it's gonna update the repositories and then install the correct firmware to get your Wi-Fi running. Now, after you do that, you're going to need to restart to make the Wi-Fi work, but you don't want to do that just yet because there's a couple of other things we want to change before we do that. And the main one being, remember in the beginning when we had to reboot and enter that line into the Yaboot screen in order to keep the computer from freezing up. So what we're going to do is make that actually permanent. And the way to do that is we're going to edit the yaboot.config file. And to do that, <clears throat> all you have to do is type in sudo, uh, let's use leafpad in this, uh, for this example, so that's just a text editor. So we'll do sudo leafpad etc slash yaboot.config. Press enter. And then it's going to ask for your password. All right, so this is the file that Yaboot reads off of to boot. Now, I already edited mine correctly, and you're going to want to add this down here under Image Boot VM Linux. This tells what tells Yaboot what kernel to boot. And right here under the Append section, you should see something like Quiet Splash and uh, if you want to keep it to where you uh, don't have any text scrolling on your screen when it boots up, you can leave that in there and just press space. So, in or well, what I mean by that would be like quiet splash. Oops, I can't spell. Or whatever it says in there, I can't remember. I delete. Oh, here, like down below where it says quiet splash here. Anyway, that one's going to be like that as well. But what I'm trying to say. Here, I'll just do it on this one so you can see. But you will be changing your first uh, section up here is what you're going to be adding. You're going to add basically all that that you typed into Yaboo into that append section. So we're going to do radeon dot, oops, dot mod set. Okay, so once you have all of those commands entered in the append section, and you really only need to do it in the top one, but it's a good idea to do it on the second one too in case you do boot from your old kernel or you want to boot from your old kernel at, kernel at some point. It doesn't lock up on you when you do so. So once you have those entered in, um, if you don't want to have, or if you want to see the text loading screen when uh, the kernel loads, I like to see that personally, then you just remove that quiet, quiet splash section and then you'll see it. So once you have this all set up, you're just going to go to file and then save and you can close that. All right. So after you've finished editing your yaboot.config file, you're going to need to update yaboot. And in order to do that, you're going to type in the command sudo ybin space dash v as in Victor. Press enter and then you'll see that it updates and then you're just going to go ahead and restart your computer. All right, so now here we are inside of IceWM and I already have mine pretty customized as you can see. 
I have a desktop background and right now I have a uh, jack running in the background there as, as well as the Pulse Audio Jack Sync uh, so I could record my voice at the same time as doing this screen capture. Now one of the things <clears throat> or one sequencer that I love using in Linux is Rose Garden and if you open up Rose Garden first ooh, something I totally forgot about. Okay, first off in order to get Jack even to work once you install it, you're going to install QJack Control and Jack like you normally would with your sudo apt git install QJack CTL. And once you do that, it's going to install QJack Control and all that stuff and install the audio programs that you want to install. However, Jack will not run at first. What you need to do before Jack will run is you need to change the Jack daemon to Jack 1. It defaults to Jack 2. So in order to do that, after you install Jack and everything else, you're going to do sudo apt get install Jack D1. And then at that point, it will replace all of the Jack 2 libraries with the Jack 1 libraries. And then they seem to run just fine in PowerPC. Now, another thing that you'll probably want to change is your MIDI timer or your system timer uh, in order to let MIDI function correctly within Rose Garden. So to do that, it's another pretty easy fix. You're just going to go into your sudo, or sorry, you're going to go into your modules uh, file, which is just sudo nano etc modules, press enter, and then down here you'll see I added a line that says snd-hr timer. Add that into this file then save the file uh, and then once you reboot and you open up rose garden again you can go to the rose garden garden settings and select the hr timer as the midi timer source then you will no longer get the error saying that your midi timer is not correct after that that's pretty much everything your system should be up running uh, running audio really really well um, i can run Rose Garden, I've also run Milky Tracker with the Jack interface and a lot of things in here. I haven't ch tested some of the other ones yet, but I installed a lot of things and everything seems to be running great. Uh, not really getting that many X runs, which is cool. Now to get the Pulse Audio Jack server, uh, Pulse Audio Jack uh, module rather to work, um, I had to change something else there as far as the setup in Jack. And that was right here. I installed the Pulse Audio uh, Jack module like you do, or like I did in some of my other videos, and then I just added this line to the execute script after startup, and it's just P A C T L load module module Jack sync and uh, P A C T L load module Jack source, and then that will make that module load up right here so you can have pulse audio and jack running at the same time now i know that's a lot of stuff and believe me it wasn't easy for me to get all this set up it took me quite a while about a week of messing with it so um, that's why i'm trying to show you guys everything that i did in order to get this to work as well as it's working and one thing um back on ice wm sorry i know i'm jumping around in topics here but uh i highly recommend ice wm because it's a lot less uh graphics intensive and it just is a lot easier on the processor compared to the default LXD desktop and uh, if you're using ISWN or you could even use you know I don't know Fluxbox or something like that you know just really really lightweight <clears throat> don't do anything with any kind of crazy graphics whatsoever and you'll get some much better performance that way so I'm gonna try to get as much of this stuff linked up below in the description so that way uh, you can use this video as well as the documents that I've included to get it up and running on yours. Now, I just want to mention this is for the iBook G4, uh, 1.42 gigahertz, 2005 model. I'm not sure how uh, well all of this will work on some of the other models, but I'm pretty sure ones with similar specs you're going to want to do just about the same thing. Now, I mentioned before, NVIDIA cards, I'm not sure about that. But the Radeon cards, uh, this seems to be what works. So once you get all of that set up, you should be good to go. Okay, so there's one last thing I wanted to go over. 
and this is what I was talking about earlier, about to go into before I got sidetracked with the Jack stuff. But once you get Jack working, and if you want to use the program Rose Garden, which is a great MIDI sequencer, um, you're going to get an error when you first open it up. It's going to tell you that your MIDI timing is too slow, and you're going to need to do this in order to fix that problem. So first off, what you would do is install a module that's going to correct the issue. So you're just going to do sudo mod probe and then snd dash hr timer and then press enter and then it should ask for your password. I was already logged in, so it didn't mind, but that's going to load the hr timer and then you can go into Rose Garden and go to the MIDI settings within Rose Garden and under MIDI timing or timer you can select the HR timer as your timer source and that'll get rid of that error. Now in order to make this permanent you need to edit your mod, uh, modules config file which is here so in the Etsy folder so you're just going to go to sudo sorry sudo nano etc modules oops, slash etc modules. And then you'll see I already have it added here in mine. You just go down to the bottom and you type in snd-hr timer. You save that file. And then once you do that, the next time you reboot your computer, that module will automatically load and you won't have the system timer issue with Rose Garden anymore. All right, now that just about wraps it up for installing Ubuntu 16.04 on the iBook G4 from 2005. Now, of course, if you're trying to do this at home, you may run into some different problems uh, or have some other experiences, but if you do and you can't get past it, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to figure it out. There's a couple other websites that I found really, really helpful when I was doing this, and I'll link them down below. One of the most helpful ones is one called PPC Luddite, and that one was mentioned to me in my older PowerBook uh, Linux install video by one of the commenters there, and that one really, really helped in uh, allowing me to do this and find the information that I needed to uh, allow me to come up with all of these solutions to all these problems. So anyway, hopefully you found this educational and helpful. And if you have one of these old iBooks, you can get Linux up and running on it as well. Um, I really want to try next installing FreeBSD on one of these because from what I hear, FreeBSD, even the very newest version, still supports any PowerBook that has built-in USB. So that really is like anything going back to the clamshell uh, you could install FreeBSD on, supposedly. I haven't actually tried it, but I'm looking to do that. So if you have another power book you want to donate or something to me and let me do that, feel free to let me know. I'm looking for something maybe a, a G3 or something like that that has USB. I don't know about a clamshell, but maybe a, a G3 iBook would be nice. Or I might just pick one up on eBay as well and do that next. But uh, this one I'm going to leave alone because I really like the way it's running right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was a fun to watch and you learned something. And if you did, feel free to subscribe, be sure to click like, click the little bell icon too, because that will notify you every time I upload a new video. And once again, check out my Patreon page if you can. It's just patreon.com slash Linux Music Studio. And thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time.